Now, just another one about religion, which I should maybe have put in with the one there. Again, uh, this maybe has faded out a little bit in recent years, but not quite. It just shows re religion uh, as we have known it, uh, as it has been read out in masses and missiles and all the, and the services of various kinds, has been behind the times and has needed to catch up a little bit. New management. I don't agree with all these thou's and thy's in worship, talk of kings and kingdoms and dominions, outmoded fittings of a dutiful age, when obedience was no option, and kings were fathers in their claims upon their people, long-suffering over father people, while children knew their place, or so the stories go. Now, without change to management, is it not true that officers no longer are divine, merely efficient, the company of saints is limited, the treasury of grace dried by inflation, grace itself become poise, spirit manifest in metric measure, a hereafter purchased by installment plan. In a democratic managerial age, is it so odd to accept directives from a chairman god? <laughs> Yeah, go on, yeah, go on, yes. What's the difference between belief and faith? Belief, I suppose, is, is personal faith always tended to have, as we in Ireland were taught it, tended to have a capital letter because it was regarded more as a Catholic faith. And I mean, it's totally out of respect of your portrait of it, and totally out of the expression of your portrait, because your portrait asks questions. Could we have the questions afterwards, Mark, as we usually do and enjoy it, please? No, I'm sorry, sorry. Sorry. no, no, it's fair enough, as you say, but, but I'm, look, all I'm doing is putting forward an opinion, like everybody else's opinion, everybody here has their opinion. <laughs> is only as good as anybody else's. No better, no worse, absolutely. And, and I sometimes, of, of late, the more I listen, as I say, to the old people, I'm beginning to think, God, who is she? You only say that now because your wife is retired. <laughs> Last, last uh, week I was down in Brosco, my home place, and it's a funny, a poem I'm trying to get to grips with at the moment. It's called, it's called, I haven't got far, it's called Between Two Tides. Tides as in the tides in, in the sea. I am where I am in Clare, I went to where I came from, and I find I don't belong anywhere. You know, that's a common thing. Like Oshin in Ignafania. You, 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 you spend 30 years out of your own place, you go back and all the people you knew growing up, they're all dead. You come to where you're here, you, you belong, you think. And of course you don't belong. You never will belong in a new place. Your children will, but you don't. And the proof of that is that when you, for example, come to a funeral, people are talking about their own families or, for example, me coming out of the church on Sunday in Crochine. They are the old fellows are talking among themselves. You salute them. They're not you. They're friendly. But. There's always a but. And I'm sure it's, like, it's like that with anybody. I have no complaint against that. That's the way it is. And if you complain against that, you're only a fool. <laughs> yes, you're all, but you'll be always a blow in in a place. And, yeah. And there's no, point, there's no point in making a scene about that, that is the way things are. Now, I'd love to be able to get a grip on that and to be able to, you know, to, to, that is a good poem in that. But here it is, coming home. I can't remember when I wrote this. The Clydeck, that's the local river, is a fraction wider. But the boys intently warming their hooks can't realise that I have trampled grass to mud Walking, a walking on the waters of a sort 
where they expect fish only. Back, nearly home again, I look for tunnels made in childish games through hedges long cut down, as every year I look. Today, in my own place, I can be unashamedly sentimental, listen to myself falling into the same old pattern, a pint now formally in my grasp, as those I once thought old. How good the old times were, how so many things have changed, and not all for the better either. But do my talk confederates save their important words until my tourist back is gone? Ditches here and there have disappeared, and ranchers brush aside the more accessible small farms. A cattle parlour lords it in its splendid fresh grey eminence where I counted three small fields last year. And the Buchalon eradication scheme goes on, on. And though the Fogra, yellow as the Bucalans now, send, still sentries stolidly in the barracks window, the same survivors still cling here ragged, yellow, life tenants in their ancient place, tenacity their title, and an ever-aging silver-wrinkled river glass and ever an evening stream talks a language that I still can understand, fishing line swish, vital, idiosyncratic thread connected. My memory served me well in patches, and what more can be expected? Nothing. Nothing has changed utterly, though everything has changed. Uh, I want here a life for auction. Someone kicked lot 54 again. Fling it up there out of harm's way. Must and splay of bindings span the brownish dust an instant. Crack from hand-tooled calfskin that was handsome once. Desired. Parchment on which a room pressed mellow. Gold lettering glinted once. <coughs> Islanded in its, its cone of light. Unfriended, he borrowed wands of words. Ferreted meaning into the cruel light of scrutiny, read Canon Sheehan, Canon Law and Dollinger, dis disliked the German certainty, admired the mind, willed no black palm stick against benighted gropers in their prickly beds, their pleasures purgatory enough. His confidence lifted latches, made home of hearths where fear, content, grew old acquaintance since the Parnell split suffered him in uneasy jollity, a rain cloud in their everyday. Golf, <coughs> parish teams, worms eating chapel rafters, station dues, wound up the carousel of loneliness and service, ended remainders, remained in an auction lot. The year swung round, lives became a jingle, meaningless, pocket watch without hands, ticking, ticking, consulted out of habit. Going, gone, lot fifty-four, lives of the saints and others that softed bits. Next item. <laughs> <laughs> the, death, the death of a poor parish priest, beloved, beloved, bits and pieces put together. Yeah. <coughs> now, I remember. And I, I, I looked at it when I was down there last weekend. The house, and, and you know yourself, that when you pass through a village, the two most unremembered groups of people in a village are the priests, because they're all passers through, and the guards. Yeah. <laughs> because they're all passers through. Yeah, huh? Well, you know, that's it, and, and they're gone. They're here and they're gone. Yeah. And very often you can't even remember the house that they lived in, you know, at, at a distance of years. But there's always a something, there's always a something that will remind you of a particular guard. Someone would bastard. You know, because they, they, they were bitter. They were bitter. They helped people out for the smallest of things, they lighted the bio. And some of them were kind men, you know, there was the good, the bad, and the indifferent, like all human beings. And yeah, 
And I remember one particular guard and let this speak for him. He was a nice man. And look, this is this is what I what I remember. No remembered name. Purple head shine through his autumn stubble, mopping the sweat of walking <coughs> from his eyes. His garb a cap thrown by, wide as a landscape I remember him. He sat on my model fit MiG-15, and I thought him the fattest man that ever inhabited a navy trousers. <laughs> Down the, down the dark well of memory I see him struggling a moment, his bulk supported on a model claim, all submerged his other moments in the darkness. Light sets fainter on his son, a silent, serious boy named for his father. He held his head one side, was a priest, and left it. In all the casual conversation of my native place, a place where names are legal tender, never a mention of their name. They were outsiders, transplanted, before their memory could take root. Somewhere, down another well, eyes look on a different, maybe lighter picture. Friend, neighbor, lone survivor, different lives we have drawn memories from one well, but I, to quench a random, undemanding, First. Now, just this one, again, something leave, leave too serious behind us for a moment. Cats I don't like. I'd never be cruel to a cat. They're a lovely animal, they're a graceful animal, and <coughs> at the moment I have two that a neighbor has left. You won't feed them. But he has left him, and I, I, I have to feed him, because I don't like to see cats going hungry. And my dog gets on very well with them. They jump up on his back, and then, you know, they turn into him, but he gets on well with him. But, they're a useful animal. They keep, um, they keep, things away that you would rather not have near the house. And since there's a stream near our house, the, I, I, I'd like to have cats nearby, even though I'd never let them in the house. Like a little dog, he comes in every morning. Well, he's, he's, he's the laziest animal. I, he spends three quarters of the time with his legs like <laughs> up on the armchair. He thinks it's his armchair. And he'll come up on the bed, and he's the hot water bottle. Uh, winter and summer. But, <laughs> Charlie, we bought him a Charlie, and he's a cop dog, and cop dogs must be constitutionally lazy. <laughs> but this is this is two versions of the one poem, if I might say. I tried to a little bit bigger, and I tried to reduce it. Hot days, not cat days. It's no joke being a black cat on a hot day. Pads squeak. Claw scratch the ground in protest. Hairs mat in lumps, unlicked. Yellow eyes slitted black in apathy. Focus heat in. Bands of tongue uncoiled. A scratchy foot mat. Tail brushes after. Even the birds walk safe. Their airline tickets cancelled. <laughs> no, it's no fun being black and hot. Especially if you're a cat. <laughs> now, the shorter version of that. <clears throat> it's no fun being black, a cat on a hot day. Cat black. Black pot. Pot. Claw scratch. Four fall patch. And twitch. Pads squeak. Tail creaks. Weak. Eek. Eat. <laughs>